Ready to go. Alrighty, ladies and gents, I'm here at the Anvil's place. It okay. is vlog number five, yep. squat day. Squat day. Holy dooly, what a <laughs> wait for. But this is why I'm here, because I don't know how to squat. I have a history of a back injury. Mm -hmm. um, so I got, so if, if I tried to take on this myself, I would probably hurt myself pretty quick. Yeah. Why are you here? So I'm here <laughs> under the watchful eye of the anvil, and uh, we'll squat. So yeah. it should be should be good. But what what do we got in what have we got installed today, man? What what are you seeing this? As? Well, we're gonna do some stuff to warm up your back. Yep. Tie, and we're gonna do something like the McGill's Big Three a little bit, uh, which is for your lower back just to warm up. Uh, it's gonna tie your lats into your hamstrings and glutes, um, and get all that firing properly. Um, which we'll do on the deadlift platform. Then we'll get into squatting. Wait, I don't know, man. Yeah. Well, well, we're just going to keep it safe. I, yeah, for me, I, I am like, like I said, because of my back injury, mm. it is, and it actually, it actually feels vulnerable at the moment. I don't know what it is. Just the the last week, I've done more everything body, mm. Mm. and my back feels like it's like on. It's talking to me at the moment. Yeah, um, uh, we'll get around that. Like the thing with powerlifting is it all has to be safe. So if there's, I'll be nitpicky. Yeah. Um, and overall, it's probably gonna look fine. And I get this a lot uh, with people I help to squat is yeah. I get really nitpicky. You're doing great, but I'm just trying to keep people safe. Cause generally yeah. the few people I have helped squat have like chronic lower back issues. Yeah, um, well, the uh, last time I squatted was with Juji and Tom and mm. the, 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 the plates looked way more impressive than they actually were. Uh, they, I mean, they weren't fake plates, but they were like really light rubber, rubbery oh, plates. Oh, the CrossFit plates, yeah. Yeah, the CrossFit plates. So, those are 25 kilo <laughs> plates, and they don't look impressive. Um, but they're heavy as hell. <laughs> yeah, they're like, what are they? They're 55 pounds each. Yeah, we're, we're um, a plate that big with Juji. A plate twice like, that thickness was like 20 pounds. Yeah, yeah, it was that sort of stuff. It looked it looked long, amazing. Yeah. It made my squat look decent, but I was actually I was actually squatting like sixty pounds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, guys, uh, I'm gonna get uh, put this camera down. You get warmed up. Like I said, we're in day five of the Todd Hutchings process at Something the moment. Like a how to to squat yeah. for arm wrestlers, because there's a couple of little tips and tricks that we can use in hand positioning to get around our shonky. Yeah, now wrists and I'd love to actually get your thoughts just in general um, on squatting and the effect of squatting on an arm wrestler's strength. Hmm. Okay, so Ryan Espy actually touched on this in one of his videos, and basically he recommends squatting up to eight reps to get that big hormonal uh, release to help recovery. Yeah. Uh, in my experience, I actually do fantastically at competition when I do a heavy single a couple of days out. Hmm. Um, but generally squatting overall, I think it's fantastic for your whole for your whole body and your whole strength. Yep. And if your back's feeling vulnerable now and you've not really done any hip hinging or anything like that, this will help kind of brace all of that when you're doing your heavy curls. So I think the effect for overall strength does and can help an arm wrestler. Mm. Um, I certainly have had benefits, but I've always squatted. Um, I know, and I know people often talk about weight categories. I'm someone who pulls in a weight category. Mm. But I've, I feel like I've got so much body fat that I could lose that I, it, it like I can see there's a long time before I really need to worry about yeah. going out of a weight category. So the, the squats have the best bang for buck. I think it's better than deadlifting. Yeah. Um, for an arm wrestler, I kind of think deadlifting. Um, it takes me a lot longer to recover from a heavy deadlift, and I don't feel a lot of carryover from that, despite it being kind of my favourite lift. Yeah. Squats seem to suit better for arm wrestlers and just overall recovery nice. and body strength so all right then well mm. let's uh let's get the show on the road yeah first one of the mcgill's big three mcgill is a um american physiotherapist he has his own university and he specializes in low back health um well spinal health overall um okay so this one we want to get your wrists in your hands underneath your shoulders, knees at everything at 90 90. I'm going to take a big breath in so we can get that neutral spine so through our stomach. And then we're going to like Superman punch with opposite hand to opposite arm. So 
So we're leading with the heel and the fist. And this is just to wake up connections, activate? This is to connect your lats into your glutes and hamstrings so we have that cross. Yeah. Right. This is actually surprisingly hard. Yeah. Yeah, you make it look easy though. I know that I'm going to be like, oh my goodness, okay. Well, the first thing is the, <laughs> is the big breath through your stomach. And you're going to want to hold yeah. that. My wrist flexion. <coughs> you can do it on, <coughs> I can do it on my knuckles. Yep. Okay, just get your knuckles a little bit more underneath your shoulders. Yep. So we're going to take massive breath through your stomach. And you want to use your stomach to fill up the space in your lower back. Yep. So less movement through here. Yeah, so lower heel and leading with your heel. There we go. We want to be tying this lat into that glute. So you're going to be dropping that shoulder blade, keeping it back. So keeping it back whilst... Yep. Big breath. Hold. This should be challenging. If you're squeezing everything together. Oh, so, so when I'm extended, I should be still squeezing through? Yeah, okay. and keeping this flat. So, uh, yeah. And, and just how many reps Ten. before I'm swapping? 10, yeah. yeah. Coordination is a weird thing. This is also handy priming you neurologically. So, a little bit less through here. We don't, yeah, there we go. So you can go with a lower heel position, lower heel, yeah. And for you, you should be feeling tightness through your abdominal and your lower back. Yep. So we're trying to tie it in. And the shoulder blade. And the neck, neck and head? Neck just neutral. We're trying to keep the spine neutral, so we don't want the neck to be in too much of a extension. One. You're going to go flat on your back. You're going to pull your knees up to 90 so it's comfortable. You're going to have your arms up like this so you put your head flat. And you're going to drop this hand and this hand. But the trick is, big breath in, you want to keep your lower back on the floor. Okay. Yep. So I'm already off the floor. Yep. Yeah. So when, even when your leg drops down. And dropping this way? Yeah. You want to keep your lower back on the ground. This is like pat your belly, rub your head and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, it's yeah. going to help with the coordination of squatting. <laughs> so you should be squeezing through your abs. It's uh, weirdly challenging. I know. So, to make it harder, okay, yeah, come up, good. big breath in, hold it, go down, and then let your breath out by keeping your lower back while you come up. So as you come up, let your breath out. And keep your lower back, that's better. That's hard, huh? Yeah. yeah. The, the challenge of just telling my body what to do there yeah. is hard. The main thing is, is keep that low back on the floor. Yeah. Exhale on the way up. Yeah. This feels rehabilitating already. Yeah. Just for where my back's vulnerable at the moment. So we're not going to do the other one um, out of the big three. Not really necessary for what we're doing because we've got some other stuff. Lower back on the floor here. Yeah. Good. Good. Love it. Love it. Uh, so you should really, you, be doing that every day. Yes. <laughs> And yeah, I really like it because. Alright, next thing. It's gonna, we're going to. Yeah, 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 okay, cool. Alright, we're going to wake up your hips. Oh, people sit and sit and sit, and their hips get chronically tight. And because they're so tight, they end up getting weak. So when we're squatting, often people find it difficult to hit depth because their hip flexors are getting all jammed up. Yep. So, super simple. I just do circles. If you feel clicking in your hip, back off, make your circle smaller. And you might do, you know, 20 reps yeah. per leg. The idea is, is just to wake up that hip flexor. It seems counterintuitive to be working something that ordinarily is super tight, 
Yep. Often we don't have time to try and loosen it up. Um, and there's not really a whole lot of purpose in loosening up when you're squatting because you are going to be compressing your hip flexor anyway. So I often think, why am I loosening that when I'm going to jam it up straight away? So I want to activate it and get a nice burn through that hip flexor. Mm -hmm. Super simple. Make the circles as big as you can. Which was the particular? Outward. It doesn't actually matter, but outward. Because we're squatting, we're going to be... Oh, I am so weak here. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is like... This is part of the reason why you love back surgery. This is... It's for like, <laughs> dude, I don't know, like my form is gone already. I can't even. Straighten your legs. Oh, a little pull through Weak. your hamstring. Not much. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like, like straight away, I'm like slouching back yeah. into it. I, should I be forward with my hips, like with my spine? Uh, just neutral. neutral. And that's the other thing. And we'll like, get into that. Like I keep can't straighten my leg. Yeah. Keep my keep my back upright. You can keep your bum off a little bit. That'll help. Yeah. Okay, that's a little bit better, but you can lean back a little. But man, okay. weak. <laughs> We're going to do two sets of that. And you'll find your right leg, because we drive on the left side of the road, and yeah. we're on the right side of the car, our right leg is often a lot tighter. I know my right foot, like in general, aches, because yeah. I do stuff, yeah, I drive. The heel of my right foot is always yeah. a little annoyed with life. Swing your reps on that. It's a nice burn through there. So when that's weak, a lot of the time that's why people's lower backs are stuffed. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely need to do this yeah. just for health sake. Like, yeah. even if it's not our wrestling <laughs> benefit, uh, just the functionality like of my body needs this. Yeah. Because I, I, I think I think I told you story. 2007 parachuting accident, L4 L5 disc. I walked with a cane for like a year and a half, yeah. and any any out of place spinal movement was a big knife in the back. Yeah. And so because of that, I became guarded, weak, and scared to actually yeah. to do anything. I find that a lot of the time, well, I got a friend of mine who is my therapist. He's my guy. He's fantastic. Yeah. He had, you know, all those sorts of issues too. Um, did yoga, got him to stop doing yoga um, because he could, became too good at it. There was no stability in his spine. Yeah. Got him squatting, and he's made like exponential gains and no low back pain because yeah. he's learning to stabilize and to hinge properly and regularly. Well, the, the the thing for me about squatting is I have no desire to ever be an elite squatter, so there's no reason for me to ever rush. On numbers, yeah. so as a human, it's almost our responsibility to squat because yeah. before we had seats, where, where did we used to work? Yeah, like I can sit quite comfortably. Yeah, squat. <laughs> like if I'm tired or if I'm standing in the line at the bank, I don't care. I know it's weird, but <laughs> you do this at the bank sometimes. If I'm gonna wait there for too long, <laughs> I, need, I, need whatever, to, I just, I'd love to get footage of that just yeah, you randomly squatting in the bank. It's, it's comfortable, man, and this is where we used to spend our life so. Yeah. We're not biomechanically designed to sit. This is why our colons aren't straight and we're meant to poo like this. This is why constipation's so rife because of toilets. Yeah. So this is a natural position. All right. Cool. Are we warmed up now? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what do we call that phase? <laughs> That's part of it. That was. But now, because we're arm wrestlers and we're stiff up top, we need to open our chest up. Okay. Yeah. So activation, not stretching. Yeah, before. To be honest, man, I don't stretch. Um, and there's good reason for that, is I want as much stability through my shoulder and my hip girdle as I can. Being flexible isn't on my radar. I need stability, I need stiffness, I need that stretch reflex through there. So I'm as mobile as I need to be. And a lot of this time I will activate a uh, kind of greater range of motion while I'm doing something, while I'm exercising, be it a push-up for my thoracic. I have other things uh, for that as well. But we want to really take care of our thoracic spine. So opening the chest up, really important. We're going to do some push-ups on the rings. Just push-ups. Yeah. I want to just randomly mention, um, I don't know if you saw my, the volume session that I did on my, my arms. 
it wasn't that brutal, but you know, talking about range of motion, normally my right arm, that's it, doesn't go any. I can't <laughs> hyperextend. Yeah. No, my left arm can usually hyperextend, but that's it for me on my left at the moment yeah. because I have the delayed onset muscle soreness <laughs> from doing yeah. volume. Is uh, is quite funny. I'm looking for a nice stretch in your chest, a little pause in the bottom, just a little one. Clickety, clickety, clickety. Yeah. So you want to go super high rep until clicks are gone, which they will do. Don't touch them together. Yep. You want to keep your shoulder blades back. The reason I like doing push-ups is it is a closed scapular movement, which means the shoulder has to be in a stable position to do the exercise rather than a bench press. You can get away with it not being, and yep. you take yourself to Snap City. So push-ups are super safe. This is why I like adding the degree of instability to the rings, because it is so safe. Yeah, the rings, yeah, they feel very different to even, even dumbbells. Yeah. These are far more. Yeah, but it's just enough. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to be doing chest sessions with Todd too. Yeah. That's a. Uh, so the chest sessions, and we'll get into that. It's Tuesday next week. Yeah. So the chest session, I warm up my lower back. Yeah. Sorry, not my lower back, my upper back with, like, we're going to do the upper back now. Like, a couple of. I'll warm up with a set of 50. On, uh, on red. So, hmm. oh, well yeah. So, this one is high rep with this. We want 30 reps. And all I'm trying to do is think about my rear delts, think about my thoracic and pulling my chest through. Yep. yep. So easy. So upper back stability in a squat, often is the difference between a stable squat, pull, pulling your chest through and keeping your lower back safe is activation of your upper back. Really try and pull your chest through so you're getting maximum contraction. There we go. High rep, we want a nice burn. And same thing with bench press. Whatever you do on your anterior, you need to prepare equally with your posterior. Yep. Getting the lights gas and fast, buddy. Alright. <laughs> so, Am I ready to squat? I think we're ready to go. Alright. So there you go, we might have a couple of drills in between sets just to see how you're moving. Yep. Um, so we're going to start with body squats. Yes. <laughs> yes. Please. <laughs> so, we're going to see how you're moving. And we'll likely do some drills in between. <sighs> Because you probably got stiff ankles, but we're gonna see how we go there. The old stiff ankle syndrome, eh? Ha! Ah. Do you want me in here? Are you on there? I think you'll have a plate. <clears throat> Hold it out as far in front of you as you need to just feel balanced. So there's usually. Yeah. So, toes out. So then like this? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm going to get you to put your heels out ahead. You're going to stand a little bit wider. Yeah, and toes out. And we want to think about spreading the floor. Like you're trying to rip the floor apart like a piece of paper between your feet. Okay. So driving out, you'll during, you feel your glutes well, firing. During down and up? Yeah. Okay. You'll feel your glutes just light up. Knees? I mean the cue is knees out, but I'm hesitant to use that cue because I only use it on people who knees are going in. Okay. <laughs> Often people's knees don't go in. It's surprising. So your knees are out, not caving. Yeah. 
So I don't need to tell you to do that. But spreading the floor yep. is pretty important. That's a weird one, that's spreading the floor, like I'm confused. It feels like, like a unnecessary effort. Like it feels yeah. like the effort should be going up and I'm like, hang on, I'm using this yeah. weird effort. In, in the warm up, it's, it feels unnecessary. Yeah. And we don't want to over accentuate it either. It's just to get you moving right. So as you drop into the hole, all, all you're trying to do is open up, uh, like you've seen my videos, in the, in the, in the hole, I'm trying to show you, <laughs> open your tank, as uh, Edward Cohen, very famous powerlifter, says. So when I'm in the hole, I'm trying to, boom, I'm upright, but I'm, yeah. I'm trying to show everyone you gooch. And, uh, weird cue, but it works, huh? Yeah. yeah. It gives you room for your torso to drop between your legs. Actually pretty good. Sweet. Oh, I'm getting fatigued. <laughs> All right, so tip for arm wrestlers. When we are with our hand placement, we're considering our hand placement. We go as wide as our mobility allows, which is often very limited. Um, so a trick I like to use is I drop my pinky off the bar. So when I'm gripping, I like to keep my thumbs and everything above. You can go below, doesn't matter, whatever's comfortable. Um, Cause it's gonna sit on our rear delts, which is something quite different. And I think is gonna be more beneficial to someone with a low back problem is if you do the traditional high bar, where it sits, where it's sitting on top of your traps, if you miss groove, there's your back. Okay. If you've got a vulnerable back and you miss groove it, you're stuffed. So we're going to powerlifting style, put it on your rear delts, on that little shelf, and this is why upper back stability is super important. So big breath on the arm rack and strong. We want to make that bar feel light from the very get-go. Because if we kind of have a bit of a lazy unrack, like it's going to feel like hell mm -hmm. the whole way down. So nice and strong. I'm going to take a new breath. So you bounced off the bottom. Oh, I say bounce. You, you were quick then. That looked very quick. And that's my body type. Yeah. I've always been... <laughs> Been able to blow out of a hole really quick. Yeah. Um, I get stuck about a third of the way up. Is if I'm going to fail, <laughs> is blow out of the hole and then like there's like a sticking point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even on the way down, that might have seemed quick. I'm hitting. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I'm hitting the hole as precisely as I can because the way you go down is going to be exactly the way you come up. So I'm trying to hit. A perfect balance point. Okay. So squatting, once you get your upper back tight, big breath. You see when I got ready to squat, everything, boom, I got really tight, yeah? So one of the hardest things to teach people. So feet before picking up? Like as if you, you uh, said. Yeah, you've got a bit, a little bit narrow. Yeah. Yeah, but put it back. Big breath. And I want you to unrack it with your upper back, really tight, and pop it off the rack. It's, it has to feel strong. My side pressure on my elbow yeah. is talking to me there. Just the, pinky, uh, keep your pinky off. Keep, keep my pinky, so... Off the bar. Like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... Hands even or uneven? Hands even. And I, see the rings? On the bar? Yeah. Line yourself up. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. He's going off the rack, not the rings. Yeah. yeah it's weird to stupid with just the bar. <laughs> Let me check that placement. Sitting on your rear delt. Nice. Okay. Tight upper big breath. Tighten your upper back. Initiate. Go to the floor. A little too low. 
Okay, bring your left foot in ahead. Yeah, just because that knee's starting to come in. Okay, your hip flexors, just hip shifting. Bring your stance in just a little bit narrow. Toes out. A little bit more. There we go. Balance. Uh, sit back. Okay, big breath. Really hold it. Trust that your lower back will hold out. Good. My quads just feel weak. Yeah. Like, I can feel... Yeah, so use your glutes and your hips. A low bar squat is hip thumb dominant. Hips, what, squeeze, like, like clench? groin, yeah, groin. So when you're sitting back into it, you're gonna feel a big stretch through your groin and you're activating your glutes on the way up. Oh, I'm trying to find it. Yeah. It's weird, I just don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so, sit back on your heels a little bit more. Okay, Watch your fingers. Okay, bit of a cheat because you're not sitting back. I'm gonna put some plates underneath your feet. This is just a two and a half kilo plate. And you're gonna put your heels on. Not because your ankle flexion is bad, is I want you to be able to sit back on your heels a bit. Now if this doesn't work, you can try something else. Yep. <laughs> so you want to be sitting back. So if you see my side angle. Yep. Okay. It's just balance. So next side angle. Think about this, this might help. Is that bar, watch the bar, in relation to my midfoot. Bar's right over my midfoot. Yep. Yep. as upright as you can, but with a neutral spine. So the way we achieve that is when you take your breath in, I want you to think about locking your root cage down. Good. Keep the root cage down. Good, perfect. Much better. I felt better. Yeah. I don't feel as sloppy yeah. at the bottom. Yeah. It's way more connected. Balance. That Balance. feels... <laughs> I feel like I could lift weight there. Yeah. Where before the bar was making me like, ooh, I'm all yeah. the shop. Yeah. Oh, that's so much better. Punch the pawn. That felt a lot nicer. Yeah. Like... Eventually, like I'm a quad dominant lifter. Yeah. So I have squat shoes that give me a platform. But when I'm squatting in knee wraps, yeah. which act as very strong quads, um, I'm in flats. Yeah. So because your quads are weak, <laughs> yeah. um, you're getting pitched forward. Yeah. So this allows you to sit back and biomechanically kind of help you out a little bit. So, question for you. Let's make the assumption form is now all right. As an arm wrestler, Todd said, look, we're not trying to do five by five and set strength records. We're just trying to keep it alive, keep the body moving forward overall. What would you recommend? Sets of eight. Sets of eight. Sets of eight. And Four to five sets of eight. Yeah. And, like. and well, I feel like sets of eight right now with this bar, I mean, I, I feel like I personally wouldn't want to add more than like 10 kilos to this. It's fine. Just without. Again, that's that neurological efficiency. Yeah. That will take time. It's like anything. We start side pressure. Day one, weak as piss. Mm. 
Did you see my left side pressure? <laughs> yeah. I, had, I had literally <laughs> 20 kilos of force required and it was that was my one rep, one rep max. And it hurt. Yeah. It hurt. Yeah. But you'll find the more you do it very quickly, yeah. it'll come up super quick. Yeah. It's just once you learn how to move on your left. Yeah. And it's the same thing. Once you learn how to move. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do side angle. But if you can pause in the bottom and practice balance. Okay. How long? Like two, two seconds. So think about that bar over midfoot in a straight line. Good. Your heels set. Perfect. Okay. Less tuck in your big breath. Better. Okay. A little bit lower. Up. Good. Okay, see that little movement you yeah, got out of the hole? Forward to get yeah. to come so up. So you're keeping it rock tight, so upper back. Surprising? Yeah. Cr clamp that upper back till it till it cramps. <laughs> Super tight. You want to bring your shoulder blades back and down. That was more stable, it was slower, but it was smoother and less jelly in the bottom. Good, getting tired, rack it. <laughs> yeah, really uh, trying to get the none of that rocky forward then yeah. made me weak everywhere else, but so that's the form. Yeah. That's a bigger priority than coming back up, yeah? Yeah, he's, get, he's coming out of the <laughs> hole in a more stable position. So when, yeah. the thing with the squat, why it's more effective than a deadlift is, you know, deadlift the bars in your hands. You know, uh, and that seems to be, it's easier. Uh, yeah. This is on your back. So the relation between the bar and the floor, it's going to get lost in the middle. Yep. So spinal rigidity is what we're after. Mm. That's why I said hit the bottom and pause because I want you to think about balance. Yeah. And it gives you just that little bit of thinking room to how best to come out of the hole. That and it will strengthen your hips and your glutes. Yeah. I mean, you know, for me right now, I relate this to side pressure in an experience that I recently had, I had that leading edge of my inner elbow yeah. for years as an arm wrestler was, was the, the, taking the brunt of side pressure pain. Yeah. And I've, in my side pressure training, I'm now, I'm not, I'm not working on that. I'm like, no, develop side pressure yeah. this side of that pain. Yeah. And I've strengthened there and all of a sudden, it's, it's, it's yeah. gone. I mean, you want to work with pain, not exacerbate it. Yeah. Like Devin Larat talks about that. Every injury I've ever had, like say last time I, I did something to my lower back, squatting because I yeah. wasn't paying attention. Whatever happens, um, got out of the car from home and I could barely walk. Yeah. The first thing I started doing was squatting. Yeah. You know, and yeah. the next day I was like, bugger it. I then you know I could only when I got home I could only squat, I don't know, twenty centimeters. Yeah. And then I got to. The next day, squatting 70 kilos. Day after, 120 kilos. Day after, 180. And then the day after that was, screw it, let's do the weight that hurt me in the first place. And it was fine. So pain, once the inflammation goes away um, and kind of physiological range returns, if there's pain still there, it's in your head. And you need to train your body well, to say, well, this is like, okay. Back to the squat. Just those, those last couple of reps where I was struggling to get, get back up. They felt like, they really did feel good. They felt Yeah, good. It, I felt it like, looked stable. You'll see on the video coming back. Yeah. There's none of that movement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that that was like a little moment in my head of like, there's where you need to develop some strength. So the balance goes further. If you think about your hip girdle yeah. like a bucket of water, yeah. and you, while you're squatting, need to stop that from tilting and water spilling out, you'll find that. You know, just that cue, you think about that. Yeah. And like every cue I've, I've told you does yeah. exactly the same thing. I'm just trying to find, find the one, one that's going to get through to me. Click. But they all do the same thing. <sighs> so we're going for a P, PB, PR, what do we call it here, people? 30 kilos. 30 kilos. <laughs>
Hey, no. this is this. I, don't you guys laugh? I know that this is more than a lot of you guys squat because a lot of arm wrestlers don't squat at all. So, so I'm smashing all your PBs out there right now. I actually I haven't got it up yet. So, yeah. get that really tight. Unwrap it with double leg. Yep. Boom. Good. Get your feet set. Let the bar settle. Balance. Pose out. Good. Remember all these things. Sit back. Uh, try and shift over to your left. No, no. Shift the load to your left leg. Good. Still shifting, but. So when you say shifting, as in I was or I wasn't? You're shifting that way. Shifting towards your right. And hip shift. Is complicated. Shoulder range, I tell you. Yeah. Painful in my shoulders. The thing with the squatting is that'll be the first thing that improves. Yeah. Okay, so you're shifting that way. I'm gonna be a bit of a prick. Yeah. And now it's not gonna fix the actual problem at hand because it's just your hips are super tight. This is gonna give you a bit of cue. Wrap that around your left leg. And yeah, chuck it in there. And I'm just gonna pull you gently over this way. And it's enough, it's just a cue. Yeah, it's just a cue. things my brain's trying to listen to feel things yeah and know he's not used to contracting all at once yeah yeah it's i'm trying to i'm trying to feel my leg i'm trying to feel my knees going forward i'm trying to feel my yeah. back knot and look here, here's Can another bit that we need to bust your hips coming forward is fine if they're coming over your toes it's fine what is a problem is when you're your knee comes off the line of the direction of your foot. That's a problem. But your knee's coming forward is not a problem. Okay. You know, that, that's... You see, I, was gonna, I was going to ask about that. Like, just, yeah. Yeah, like, I guess, bro science uh, was something I've heard. That, yeah, yeah knees it's forwards. bodybuilders with, I can't squat because I've got bad knees. No, no. You, uh, the knee is a stupid joint. Unless you've damaged it doing, you know, playing basketball or soccer or, you yeah. know, whatever. Generally, the hip, if it's uh, sorry, the knee, if it's painful, it's because of something above it or below it. Mm. So you, your foot could be you know, a little bit mangled, and we've got our sciatic nerve that goes down into that. Um, it could be your sciatic nerve itself, yep. and there are some sliders that we can do to help free that up. Yep. Um, I find last time I was shifting, it was because the sciatic nerve on my left leg uh, was sticking mm. um, behind my knee. So okay. and it just wasn't allowing me to move the way I wanted to. Um, so yeah, lots of things going on. It's a complicated issue, but <laughs> knees coming forward, fine. Uh, guys, uh, that session there for me, on a scale of effort, like you could see it wasn't ball busting, but it actually was, I'll, I'll say that, overall the best feeling exercise session I've done in a long time. Um, it identified some pains in some areas that were just because of lack of functionality and knowing where to turn on the hips in particular. Um, just those exercises we did in the warm up hmm. felt amazing. Like I said, I've had a chronic lower back issue um, that I've just avoided for a long time. So this felt Miguel's good. Big three. Miguel's big three. Right, I'm going to have to Google them yeah, when I get yeah. home. But, uh, <laughs> so the big three things were those three warm ups. Well, no, I did two. It's yeah. the third one's a. Um, kind of a, a safe sit up yep. type thing. I don't usually feel that's totally necessary for squatting because we've got other things that I don't want to take all day yep. warming up. So I compressed, kind of 
prioritise what's important for a squat. Mm. Um, yeah. Nice. But either way, guys, uh, thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Lachlan, for the guidance and the coaching. Yeah, really needed because if I tried to do this, <laughs> it would have been. Yeah. I probably just would have taken my injury further. Um, yeah. So. I think I'm going to squat sessions. I'm going to come here um, as long as Lachlan's willing to have me here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's good times. Happy to have you. All right, guys. See you next time. Yeah. Yes, that's a bet!